Welcome to the Upholstery Show, live from Arlington, Massachusetts. We're going to serve you up a beautiful bowl of coconut fiber. Really? <laughs> it never gets old. We love that opening. And in our studio audience, we have Jimmy, none other than the famous Jimmy, who's taking these online classes and we're going to talk about what he did today in the in the class and that's soon but Jimmy do you have anything to say you to know people? it's zoomed in on the bottle right now I know that's what I want <laughs> uh, but G Jimmy gives me a headache that's why I have to know oh, well take, take two and call me uh, another double it up uh, actually yeah I want to talk Jimmy about the perils of upholsterers and one of the perils is your back you're lifting heavy furniture and your back and you're working long hours standing up. Hopefully you, you have orthopedic shoes of some type and not just wearing regular shoes because it will kill you. And you're hopefully, another tip here actually, is that you're on a floor. The best floor I ever worked on, Jimmy, was a floor that had, it was a subfloor. Wow. It had two by fours and then plywood put on top of the two by four so you have like a bouncing effect. A little cushion. It's a little cushion, exactly. And so, but, but what my peril, my personal problem with my back over the years has been, I never have pulled my back out lifting a heavy object, actually. Well, it's always been... else to do it for you. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why you have the back aches, right? Yeah, yeah, that, that's why I'm, like, sitting in my orthopedic chair. <laughs> well, what I, I pulled my back out about two or three days ago, and I did it because I lifted wrong, and I wasn't thinking when I lifted. It was my fault completely, and I am in such agony. So I'm, I'm on the ibuprofen, but I wanted to tell a little joke. The only reason, I wouldn't normally talk about my own pains, because we all have our pains. But my wife, my poor darling wife's out there looking for a heating pad for me, and she asked me what type of heating pad she should get. You know what I told her? I said, I want a launching pad to launch me away from this pain, Jimmy. Oh, so that yeah. was my joke. That was it. <laughs> well, there you go. And now a word from our true sponsor. <laughs> so I want a launching pad to get me away uh, from this you, pain. You want basically you want that. Did you use the heating of uh, the, the, the Oh, actually, I don't think any of those remedies. You know what works? Just well, keep keep on, you know, nursing yourself a little bit, but don't change your routine too much. Just work through the pain and you'll be okay. That's what we do in the upholstery world. Well, isn't your wife a qualified nurse? Uh, uh, no, I wish. No, she isn't. Well, she probably will be have to take care of you. Yeah, right? I know. I got a lot of complaints, Jimmy. Not really. Yeah. Yeah. Not really. Mm -hmm. But anyhow, so forget about me. What about you, Jimmy? Are you, what do you, are you sore all over or just no, in one spot? I, I, you know what? I'm pretty good. I try to remember how to, like, bend over, squat, move. You know, I'm always kind of... Just a, you know, when we move furniture, it's been from a lightweight for a piece of furniture yeah. to something very heavy. Yeah. We've had a few of those. Yeah. And it's very dangerous, I mean, to a point yeah. where you don't want to slip and somebody else who's on the other end, of course, up. You know, yeah, you, kind of you could actually throw somebody else's back out by not, be, not, by not like, uh, doing the right, proper things, too. Right, so that's, that's why I always tell you when I say, let me get a good grip on you, it. Communication is important. I noticed that, you know, with, with my son, lately, uh, because I just assumed that he knows my every move, I'm not communicating very well, am I, Patrick? No, you're not. Lately... So, uh, you know, I, I find myself turning a soul without, uh, without telling him I'm going to do it. Well, I, thought, I think the fact that you tried lifting a soul all by yourself has something to do with it. Well, <laughs> here's what happened. Now that you said it, here's what happened, you guys. I got a call from a, a I student. I want to interrupt really quick. Sylvia says she was a, she's been a registered nurse for over 35 years. Best thing is ice and heat. Oh, that's what my wife said. I didn't listen to her. Yeah, see? <laughs> Sylvia, thank you so much. Thank you, Sylvia. Instead of being a wise guy and saying I need a launching pad, by the way, with my luck, I would be on the launch. You know, they launched one of those uh, spaceships the other day that was on. Definitely throw it your back. That, <laughs> that was unmanned. You'll never they get out of that. They said everything was perfect until the last second. Yeah, <laughs> and then boom. Yeah, kind of like a Three Stooges rocket. <laughs> so yeah, um, she's right. Ice and cold, right? And. Um, she doesn't say to use the ibuprofen, maybe. Maybe she wants to shy away from that. I don't know. But anyhow. So I think when you're lifting anything, including, you know, I hear even office people pull their back out by, let's say they're at a swivel chair and they need the paper. They want to get the paper from the printer and they move fast. Mm -hmm. You pull your back out like that. So maybe, Jimmy, everything movement that you do 
you should be anticipating it heavier than it actually is, maybe. Well, yeah, I mean, you, if people think, oh, you get a hernia or a bad back from lifting heavy, you lift them the wrong way. Right. But it's just the simple of... It, it's just moving, moving the wrong... Moving the chair. Yeah. And, and turning the right way and the way you do it. I right. Mean, people go, oh, what do you do? I just twist it. I just twist yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, I hear that a lot, you know. So I thank God I have not had back problems like the way other people have. You're blessed, let me tell you. You're oh, blessed. I, I, get a mat, I hear yeah. people, sorry, I remember people telling me, literally it takes me half an hour to get out of bed. Yeah, now. that's me right at this point. But, you know, once I get going, I'm okay. So well, maybe your wife will just give you a little food out of this. <laughs> Usually an M80 works. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, well, you know what, I mean, I'm sure they're kind of a little short these days. But I'm sure she'll come up with something. You know, she's a very handy She's woman. very handy. So I want to tell you how I did it. So I get a call from a, a, a student, an ex-student, and she has this beautiful Sheridan sofa. And it, uh, what I didn't know, so you, usually the Sheridan sofas today, they're lightweight, the newer ones, and I can lift it up with one hand easily enough. But this had to be an antique one. And if she's watching, if Laurie's watching, don't worry about this. It wasn't your fault. It was my fault because I was the jerk that went and picked it up. But anyhow, when I went, it was in a it was in a little storage area in the driveway. I figured I could back down. It was on casters, so everything looked great. I underestimated how heavy it was, though, because it's an older piece and it has really heavy stock. So what happened was I lifted one end to the in the van, and then awkwardly I went to pick the other end up, and that's how I did it. I wasn't thinking, and I I underestimated the piece. So if that helps you guys, I hope so. So let's move on to something else now. I just want to, we've been getting a lot of, what's amazing is our Facebook uh, forum has just exploded and I'm going to get to that. And I want to thank Jimmy off right off the bat for being a, an administrator. He's really on the ball with this. I think he's on there now. Look, Jimmy's on there now. <laughs> Gee, ball, he's on the ball. You believe that? We're going to have to give him a raise, Patrick. Did those platform shoes come in the, at all? I'm waiting for my they did with the man cardboard. Too. Did you hear what Jim? <laughs> we got... The trailer they say is going to be coming back on still. Oh, right. Jimmy has requests. Jimmy's fame, people are just really fascinated with. He's getting a lot of fan letters. He's getting a lot, a lot of, there's a lot of groupies out there for, for Jimmy. So he's demanding certain things. One of them is a trailer. What else, Patrick? Chocolates or caveat? Every, every filming? I prefer the chocolates. <laughs> chocolates? Yes, yes. Okay. And the trailer? How about Dunkin' Donuts? <laughs> That's a little, kind of, a couple of steps down there, Mister. You know. You know, you remind me of that commercial, that that commercial with the candy bar when there's a there's a diva in the back seat. Yeah. And the and and. Oh, the the Betty White thing. Betty White, she's the diva, and then yeah. they give her the candy and it turns into the person that it's supposed to be. Yeah. You know. But right. you know, Betty well. White, she's fantastic. I mean, <laughs> oh, she's she's great. She's been around so long, and she's did still. Did you see the, uh, what I love about her? Yeah. When she was on Saturday Night Live. Was she an upholsterer, by the way? Uh, no, I'm afraid not. Because we're supposed to be upholstery related, so you have to associate her with some type of upholstery job. Well, some I, type. That's not going to she did sit in a lot of furniture in the Golden Girls. Remember that that sofa, yes. that nice yeah. tuxedo sofa that they all sat on in yeah. that show. And Neil says he's a big fan of yours, Jimmy. Jimmy, yeah. see, I love it. I see, love see, it. see, now we have to, we have to, we have to bend to his demands, Patrick, and get that trail on. <laughs> Well, anyhow, let's get yeah, so. Make sure you put wheels on it this time. <laughs> he doesn't like the. Back to the original it. point was Jimmy was. Thank you for answering questions. Thank you for being an. That's what we were trying to say yeah, this whole you know, time. Well, you, 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 go, you go off in your you, own you, you put me on a. On a don't take your old upholstery story. You always put me on the the path less traveled, my friend. I want to be on the path that's well traveled, for everybody can understand what we're talking about here. Yeah. You think that you really understand? <laughs> Anyhow, so well, we thank Jimmy for the administrative assistance on the Facebook. He's, he's answered some questions well. I think that keep continue to do a good, good job. Thank you. So the other thing is the YouTube. Um, we are hearing from more people on the Facebook and on you that they you watch the YouTube. And they become upholsters because of the YouTube channel, which I find is fascinating. And that's why I have this I have this poster up here. This is this sits on the wall at the you American featured this in the video before. We right? did. And yeah. and uh, on the America if you guys want to see the video we featured this in how to be an upholsterer, I think it's called. Yeah. How about that, Patrick? I yeah, remember that's something. What it was, yeah. But this poster is on the wall at the Museum of Fine Arts here in Boston, Massachusetts in the American collection. If you guys are ever in town and this crazy stuff goes away, I'd highly recommend it. That is probably one of the destinations. If you were gonna have a tour 
of upholstery sites, Jimmy. That would be one of them. And you know where the other one would be? Where? Betsy Ross's house down there in, uh, I think, in Maryland. Betsy Ross's house because she is the most famous upholsterer. Well, right? she's my woman then. She's a great, she's, fantastic. She's a, she's a leader in the upholstery. See, when you have that upholstery magazine, when we start it up, right. you should have Betsy Ross as the cover. I think she should be, it should be called the Betsy Ross, the, the magazine, if there's not a some type of a royalty on it or something. Mm, yeah, right. But here's the story. Betsy Ross took over her husband's upholstery shop, he passed away. They were both working away in there. She would do the stitching and, you know, that I have a theory that she actually made the tent for that, that shop, and I have no way to prove this. That shop made the tent that was at Valley Forge. Our country was underneath that tent in that cold See, weather. Now you, now you, now I, I'm embellishing a little bit, but one thing I'm not embellishing is that she did make this, the flag, the first flag, right, Jimmy? Betsy yes. Ross. Yes. See, now you got curiosity. My theory here is, and I'm embellishing a little bit, that she's sewing, sewing away. The husband's gone. She's busy. She's got cushions all around, and she's sewing away. The door opens, and he, she, she just, she doesn't even look up. She's sewing and sewing and sewing, and the voice says, um, "Excuse me, would you be interested in making a flag?" And she's sewing. Well, I got all this other work. I got this ottoman over here. I got this sofa. I'm not sure if I have time for a flag. <laughs> and then she looks up and who's, st who's standing there? George Washington. George Washington, Jimmy. Well, there you go. Anyhow. When she said, take a number. <laughs> <laughs> take a number, George. George, you're in the back. <laughs> I'm sure once she figured out who he was that, that yeah, she changed. Yeah, you know, kind of like this uh, outstanding tall gentleman, lean. I would know, say with the white wig on. He was at the time. Yeah, with the wooden teeth and the white wig, right? Yeah. Right. Father of our country. So... I want to read this. I guess you guys can see this, I'm sure, but I want to read it because <laughs> it dawned on me just what it means when somebody says to me, "I've taken the YouTube, I've taken the YouTube videos, and I'm, I'm upholstering." And you're going to see some of these uh, beautiful jobs that people have done. Uh, Patrick will be showing them, and I'll be talking about them. But we never anticipated that to happen. I never, in my wildest dreams, thought that we could design a, a YouTube channel that people were actually learning. And not, forget about the online classes, although I highly recommend the online classes. And I think the online classes at BroadwayPolstreySchool.com or Supply.com can really kind of up your game a little bit more. But it's fascinating. And I'll, I'm going to read this to you as to why I think that that's true. So let's let's read it. This is, how was it made? Can you, is that is that focused or am I just, did I just screw it up? How was furniture made in the 18th century, right? You're talking 1700s. You're talking about that shop in Philadelphia, right? Let's just That's pretend, right? The right? Of Maine and Elm. There you go. Why do scholars and collectors consider one piece more attractive or important than another? The beauty of early American furniture lies not only in its appearance, but also in the skill involved in its construction and decoration. Furniture makers guarded the knowledge carefully, passing it down through an apprenticeship program, a young man's parents committed him to a multi-year contract, usually seven years, you guys, seven wow. years, with an established craftsman, right? So that's every day with this, with this established craftsman, right? Mm -hmm. um, in exchange, the master craftsman promised to house, feed, clothe, and educate the boy in the art and mystery, art mystery. and mystery of making furniture. <clears throat> When the apprenticeship was done, the young man often worked as a journeyman or a day laborer mm -hmm. in another craftsman's workshop until he could afford to set up his own. This gallery offers, this is the gallery of MFA they're talking about now. This gallery offers a view into the art of making furniture by showing basic construction practices, decorative techniques, upholstery, and design choices. That's why I'm amazed. So I'll be coming home with you tonight. Uh, no, well, that's okay, Jimmy. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll take a rain check on that, okay? <laughs> I'm not I, I'm not in the... You, you kick your... Well, yeah, yeah, actually, your son's out of the house, so... Well, he is out of the house. There's an extra room there, Jimmy. Yeah, yeah. But, no, so you want an adoption? Everybody, I think sure, Jimmy's I'm, looking... I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little... We're, we're about the same age. 
Well, we do a Wednesday's child for Jimmy now. That's what they call it around here. So Jimmy's a 62-year-old man. He's a good-looking guy who wants to be adopted by anybody out there that will take him on. He is in the, I would say he's approaching his journeyman in, in a poetry. <laughs> he would be willing to travel. He, what else, Jimmy? Oh, I can cook and clean. Actually, Jimmy is a very multi-talented person. He just not only does upholstery, but he does other things. He cooks. He cleans. He dances, Steak. right? You dance. Yes. You do a you do a waltz or a country dancing. Fox trot. Fox trot. Hey, ladies, there you there you go. <laughs> anyway, we, 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 we got some good submissions on the page before. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we have here to we get to again. we have to get to business here. There's no such thing as a as a 62 year old adopted. Person. There's well, no I mean, it could be a first. It could be a first. Um, so I'm going to get going on the. Um, thankfully, right, Patrick? Yeah. I'm just going on there. These these guys got to move on here. He's getting stuck. Lucas says hello. Hey, Lucas. Now, does Lucas or is it Luca, Pat? Did we hit back from? Oh, Lu is it a Lucas and a Luca? It's Luca. Yeah. So Belinda, we have hers up here, Patrick. Yep. She says my sister-in-law has had no room to keep her father's favorite chair. When he passed away, so this was my first project. Did follow did follow lots of videos and reran them several times, but was worth it. Thanks so much, Kevin. Wow, did she do a good job, Jimmy? You can't see this, but she also did some woodwork on this chair. She's refinishing, and it is beautiful. I can't tell you how how nice that looks. I love did what she, she did. She's the one that did the black um, the black um, fabric on the chair. Was um. That? I no, I don't think this was the black fabric one. That was a classy fabric. She did a terrific job, though. I, I I'm really impressed. I'm really impressed, Belinda. Thank you. If you have any questions live, we're here now. If you want to ask any questions about your project, so I'm going to move on to. Is there any live questions before we move on? That's why we're here. No, we, just the comments. We started a little early because last week we went an hour and a half, Jimmy. So uh, we we want to start a little early, maybe to to. To uh, get everything in. Okay. So, um, would you want to talk about the comments, Patrick, before I move on? Well, I, I told you, Lucas checking in. Right. Yeah. Okay. Know. That's pretty much it. Okay. And Elka, she has a, a, a photo up here of, of a project. She says, Help, I'm ready to tie down the springs and discovered that three out of nine are smaller than the others. I didn't notice until I removed them. Any advice on the placement? And I think, I think, um, Somebody answered this question. I love the I love the answer that they gave them. They said it was a wire edge seat, and that the three small springs were in the front. And I think that makes good sense, being a wire edge seat. These seats are very difficult to do. If you notice this seat here, the reason it's wire edge, Jimmy, mm -hmm. is because it's a square seat. Okay. So uh, the square seats usually get the wire edge. Although I'm not a fan of the wire edge, but in this case. There are no arms on this. It's a side chair. You can't see it. Patrick's got it up now, right, Patrick? Yeah. So if you're looking at this chair, you guys, it's a square. Anything square requires that uh, its profile down below square. You have to re you have to bring the profile up as a square. If it were round in the front round, you'd you'd be probably putting a crown seat on it. You wouldn't need the wire edge. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's good. But what is the wire edge an old technique? Is that something that? Um, not as old as a crown seat. Crown seats are the first, okay. and then and then they came out with uh, I think East Lake. That looks like an East East Lake design, actually, um, would be uh, later than Victorian, like English Victorian or French um, or French chairs. And later on, I think in the 1800s, they came out with these square seats. So, what was the purpose of having the springs lower in the front than in the back? Well, because you need a wire edge. Uh, it's a wire edge with a, on top of it, you need to put an edge roll, which okay. which fills up the rest of the height, makes it even with the rest uh, of the seat. Okay. And Jimmy, we're going to show Jimmy's, because he actually, by coincidence, Jimmy was putting on an edge roll here. I'm going to talk about that in a little while. So, let's see, FDR, FDR, Patrick. Yeah, that's, you know, that is a, um, Trisha Dale from the APO. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. Oh, he's got a really detailed, I like what he says. Well, they're asking a question. How mirrored should the spring ties be? Mirrored, okay? 
I've retried, I've retied these three times, but yet they never match up. Possibly a product of the springs not being clenched perfectly parallel. I'm pulling them tight till I can see straight down the springs from the top. By the way, which is the most important thing you're doing. So when I look at this, um, it's definitely because the spring, springs are different, you guys. They, they have different, uh, they can be wider. A spring can be wider, even though they're the same height, they can be wider on the top. And that's what I'm seeing here. So your focus shouldn't necessarily be there. So I'm kind of relieving you that spring work is never perfect. It can never be perfect. What needs to be close to perfect, and I say close to perfect, is exactly what FDR said in the last thing. He said, um, pull it, your goal is. So having, having it longer, which he depicts here, pal, you have this up, right? Mm -hmm. So the right-hand side, he's got a longer twine because the spring is a different shape, that's all. Everything else looks great. I think it looks great. So now we're on to the YouTube uh, questions, Patrick, right? Again, uh, you know, I've become a fan of YouTube myself uh, over the years. You know, before before YouTube, you, you had the choice of 8-track tapes. Oh, God. Right? That's the audio. Huh? That's the audio. Well, what's the... I would say before YouTube, we're talking about... You know, movies, VHS is DVD. VHS, so, yeah. so you send away, remember in the bat match boxes, Jimmy? The cigarette match matches in the back would say, become a, an upholsterer, become a refinisher. Yes. And you'd send away and you get... Become an artist, I love those. Things. Right, become an artist. So you get all this, it, it was cumbersome to say the least. And um, I, I wonder how much knowledge you're going to get out of a, a program like that, opposed to the, the YouTube. Which is colorized with the everything, even the iPhones are good quality now. I mean, if, if people go on our site, Jimmy, from the first video to the last video we did, they're going to see a huge jump in the quality of the videos. Oh yeah, yeah. Right. The matter, you know, it's like matter be a little bit different, but it'll be, it'll be enhanced a little bit too. Well, we're we're proud of those, and you know, we were thinking some. I watch them all the time. Oh, you do, I Jimmy. Do. Thank you. And we have a live question. And this is from Sylvia. Hey, Sylvia. I have found a chair that has a metal frame. This surprised me. I thought before I tore it down, it was wood. Do I have to sew the fabric on? Do you have any videos on this? She has come across a very rare chair, Sylvia. You, you came across what I believe. Does she have a picture of that up? Um, Could she send a picture? Can she email the picture, Patrick? Or on the forum. On the forum. Can she post on the forum? Because I think what she has... The only chair that I can, this is a Turkish, there's two possibilities. One is, it's a Turkish chair, um, it's old, and I hope she didn't take too much of it apart. But yes, the answer to her question is, yes, you're going to have to hand stitch everything. The other possibility too, and I doubt this, these are even more rare than a Turkish chair, would be the Papa Bear chair by Hans Ragnar. That chair is even more rare, and that was done in the style of the Turkish chair. I think the Turkish chair came first, if I'm not mistaken. But these are extremely difficult, extremely time-consuming pieces of furniture because everything has to be hand-stitched around that metal frame. And I'd love to see a picture of what she has. Some of them had ruffle borders. And she had maybe a follow-up question? Or no, but this is somebody else who has a comment. Okay. Uh, this is Deborah. Okay. I just tore a couch apart and the springs in the center were shorter. In the center? Do, uh, do they sit on a wood frame? Possibly. That could be explaining that. They, 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 if they were shorter and you have a wood frame that was an inch thick or an inch and a half thick, perhaps they sit atop the wood frame to make them as straight or as even as the other springs. So we need more clarity on that. So we're going to get to the comments here on the YouTube. Uh, quick tip, easy fix for damaged sofa arm. Um, Caprice says, thank you. And this was very helpful. Thank you for the comment. And then Gabrielle, she's talking about the upholstery show live, which... Last week's show. Last uh, week's show, which... That should be... Uh, you're reading the wrong one. That should be Janine. No, I got number one here. Yeah, but then there's start from the bottom up. Oh, you've got. <laughs> I see it now, Patrick. Yeah. The numbers. So let's start from the bottom with Lisa then. Yeah. Lisa says fixing a pop button free. 
I love that word free. I'm sure you guys do too. Um, by the way, we, we're filming a, a new series for YouTube about manufacturer fixes. And I had a chair in here today. It's a, one of like 10 dining room chairs where it's a beautiful chair. I won't tell you the manufacturer. It's a beautiful finish on it. Nice, uh, like a, a cherry finish. Dining room chair, really substantial chair, but not overdone. It had a beautiful fold, a slip seat on it. And the customer is very unhappy. She's only had it eight years, and all the seats are sagging. And they're sagging because they put a rubber over the opening instead of the, the normal webbing and burlap that we do, Jimmy, right? Okay. And she's got a whole living, she's got a whole dining room set, really. I mean, think about it. It's eight chairs, it's a table, and she's got, you know, the, the accessories, the, the end tables, and I mean, the, the side tables and everything, right? And then she's got this problem. And it's, it's such a shame. So I show you on that. We don't have it up there yet, but we will. I show you how to fix that problem without taking the full leather apart. Because in no time at all, she doesn't fix it. All eight seats will fail, and she's going to have to redo the seats. But this way here, we, we save them. It provides what she needs for another 10 or 15 years. It will last the life and beyond of the fabric that she has on there. So... Um, we, we're going to be offering these tips. We have another one. Is that up yet? The sofa one up yet, Patrick? Not yet. It's coming out, you guys. So we're coming out with a, a new line of products. A new line of products for the Broadway upholstery for all you people out there who are watching who are really beginners. And you, some people have a one-off. You know, they just they have a problem with their sofa. They watch one video. I do that. You know, I watch a video on how to fix a a, a, a dishwasher, for instance, which is true. And I use that. I've never gone back there. I fix the dishwasher and I'm gone. I'm sure there are people watching, right, Patrick, that do that with us. Sure. They come across our site on how to fix something, which we have offered um, all these fix-its on there. Um, and we did a sofa, and that that was a big problem. That's a two, two, three thousand, four thousand dollar investment that's going to about to just totally fail. And we rescue that, and we have a kit that we have. With the, uh, I've tested one of these hand guns, these hand staple guns, which I never believed in before because I have the staple, you know, the pneumatic staple gun. We couldn't offer these because I felt that nobody's going to go out and buy a compressor, one of these expensive guns that are about four or five hundred dollars. So we put together a kit. I think it's very reasonable that people can fix their own furniture that that's got up this particular problem, save thousands of dollars, Jimmy. Mm. So I'm proud of that too. So uh, she says, fantastic instruction for the fix a button. Thank you very much. And then Janine, and I want to thank Janine for asking such in-depth questions. I don't think she's stumped me yet, but Jimmy it, uh, proposed something today about questions on the forum, uh, that I should ask questions to see if people can answer them on the forum. Yes. So maybe we should do that. Well, a little bit of, you know, again, tools, um, you know, certain techniques, how do you, what's the, what well, I have a question for you right now, Jimmy. What would you consider the least wearing fabric ever produced? The least wearing? The least performing fabric that was ever produced in the history of upholstery. Going back many, many millennium. No, not millennium. <laughs> Hundreds of years. <laughs> well, I wasn't there for that. But, uh... You remember, Jimmy? Oh, yeah, wait a minute. Uh, Weren't you the apprenticeship in that mob, in that shop, Betsy Ross's shop back then? Yeah, I was the guy that was in back, and you know, basically I was her, well, today. Yeah, you look good for your age, then. You do I look good. I look fantastic. <laughs> so, uh, what was I saying? I got, I got, yeah, like, Janine's comment. Uh, Janine's comment. I want to thank you for Janine for all the nice in-depth comments. She hasn't stumped me yet, but... So Jimmy's, uh, Jimmy, um, I'll give you a hint. It begins with a C and ends with an L. I, I don't think you're going to get it. No. I'm but maybe somebody out there will. I'm going to leave that out there right now and see if we people are watching. If you guys know the answer to that, comment and let me know. It would be considered the worst fabric or least wearing fabric. And the only people that use this particular fabric would be somebody that lives alone. No cats for sure. No dogs. No Husbands even maybe I don't know, but just really, it's like almost like putting rice paper on your on your furniture. After Denise's comment, I got a few live ones. So live live answers to that. I know live questions. So I'll get to that. Okay, one. let's get through because we're getting busy now, and I blabbered too much, Jimmy. Right. Stop talking to me over there. Uh, <laughs> 
Another great question and answer, guys. I watched the first episode of the latest online class this week. Excellent teaching, Kevin, and great work, Michelle. Thank you. And I was wondering what the next project is. I hope it gets Jimmy's love seat. As I have yearly subscription, best value on the YouTube for anyone out there wondering. Thank you, Janine. I do think it's great value. I really do. And if for all those who can't afford the online classes, you get the free YouTube. Right, Jimmy? Yeah. Yeah. I think you get an awful lot from both, and I think one complements the other. Yeah. And like you say, with the projects that we've done, a little more enhanced to get an idea of hand, more hands-on, more up-close, mm -hmm. more techniques. Well, I think Janine says it well. She says, um, what does she say? I was wondering... She said, I have a yearly subscription, the best value on YouTube, for anyone wondering. So we have some live questions. What was I say for John and Ann? I'm checking in from Hey, Ireland. John and Ann, welcome, welcome. They're very busy. For, for Good. Holidays. Good. <laughs> Keep busy. Thank you. Uh, this one is from Pamela. Hi, everyone. I have a question about how many springs to use on the chair I'm working on. Just sent a photo. In an earlier session, Kevin mentioned number one springs, which I just received. Great. Awesome. So, when you're spreading out springs, you don't want them too close if they're hitting one another, because then you have that awful noise, metal hitting metal. Um, but this chair here, FDR, if you go back to FDR's chair, the placement on these springs is pretty standard, I think. I think you're going to have at least a two or three inch, two inch gap between each spring. That's a good rule of thumb. Um, you don't want it too close to the front edge either. You don't want the spring hitting the front edge after you tie them down. So they should be working independently of one another uh, and tight on the seat. That's another way of looking at it. Pam sent the picture of that, so I'm going to get it out. You're going to get it up? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to, there's another question live. Yeah, from Deborah. Yeah. Um, Deborah says, also, can you tell me what to replace the hay with? Oh, well, I've got a good suggestion. If you could get horse hair, but we do offer horse hair as a batting. So you're talking, when you're talking hay, you're talking hay as batting. Here the, here's batting. Um, considered batting is hay, horse hair, coconut fiber, yeah. foam. Dacron, down feathers, uh, K-Park, um, clothing sometimes. I've seen actual clothing stuffed out on chairs because usually the, the adventure from the war years here in America, at least, would be uh, a lot of the materials would, would be in use for the war effort. So upholsterers just try to use everything they could find. So I, I, I have found old pieces of quilt in pieces of furniture. I found nightgowns. I found all kinds of things inside furniture just to stuff out, you know, the, the piece. Um, but the question was, the the replacement, the really good replacement for the hay would be horse hair. If you can't have horse hair, um, coconut fiber, I don't usually, I don't even know if I can get it, but um, foam. The foam um, and cotton together. So here's the springs that uh, this is from Pam. Oh, Pam Bowen. Yeah. Hi, Pam. So, Pam, um, I like what you're doing here, I think, with the five. I mean, you could... Oh, the six. No, I like the six better. I like that she's got five in the first one, she's got five in the second one, but that lower right-hand side, because it's almost like a circular or oval shape, I would go with the six springs with the... Um, now, you're going to see that you've got, them, you've got them going the right way with the tied end. If there's one end that's tied, you want that up at the top. And you want the, even if it's tied, uh, you want that in. So that middle spring on the front, you've got that knot or the tie of the spring. You might want to move that into the interior. Just move the spring so that all of these are faced inward. So what, the, what that means is that you want a clean spring at the edges. Does that make sense, Pam? And I think your spacing on that is ideal. I love that. So go with that one. And she's, she says, how many number one springs should I place? Six is my answer. Okay? So now we've got, is there any more live questions before I go on? Not right now. So number three, it's making rollover arm caps. How do I make it snug on the outside of the arms? 
In the old days when they had fabric, by the way, I'm still waiting for somebody to answer that question about the one, probably the least wearing fabric available out there on the market. And um, I, I did give you the first letter C, the last letter is L. And also I will give you another hint that usually it's a white background with, flo with, with flo flowers. That was, that, that's all the clues I'm going to give. But back then, in the old days, we used to have a lot of loose wearing fabric, loose woven fabrics. So they used to have little what they call pigtail pins. And it's just like it sounds, right? It looks like a pigtail and you screw it into the fabric. That only works with fabric that's very loosely woven. So if you have a loose, loosely woven fabric with an app that's sticking out, that's fine. Or you could just take a regular pin and pin it down. Some people use Velcro, things like that. Um, so that's the answer to that. Number four would be the Upholstery Show Live. Um, Gabriel mm -hmm. says, not only did I watch them all, now she's talking about the, the YouTube videos, Patrick. He or she, I don't know, Gabriel could be both. Okay. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> it's true. Right? Am I right? Yeah. It's, it's Gabriel. Gabe? Gabriel. Okay. Did Is I spell the same? What did I say? Well, I don't know. Maybe it's spelled different. I just don't know. <laughs> well, the answer I know a little bit about angels, and actually, say, angels do not angels do not have do not have a sex. And Gabriel was an angel, believe it or not. They they come in the appearance of male or female, but they not. You know, I think that's they're Gabriel. not a gender. I think huh? Gabriel spelled differently. <laughs> I think that, that that is Gabriel. We get into all kinds of things here, Jimmy. <laughs> and Jimmy's quiet. He didn't even say anything. Yeah, Jimmy, what's your well, opinion? You guys are banned from the lawn, taking up my time. <laughs> confusing to me. Don't worry, you're going to get your, your spotlight soon. What, two and a half minutes? By you the way, too, too all the fan letters that we get are saying that they can't wait until Jimmy comes on to show what he's been well, doing. Maybe I should have my own show. I mean, what do you you should. You should. It's a yeah, show without any be, film in the camera. Home and, like, tell me that I'm actually off the air. You know what you should do, Patrick? Just get him a camera without any equipment working on it. Just say a security the, camera. A security. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got your father's humor, I can tell. I'm sure Jimmy's appeared in many security cameras. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, I think Patrick took the one around the block from the building that time. Oh, yeah. They call it CCVT or something. CCTV. TV? You're the star. No. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so I was wrong. That is Gabriel. Okay. She did comment. She, she's on our forum. So. Good. So, um, she says, not only did I watch every single YouTube video, but I rewatched the information that I needed to study closer. I will post the finished sofa on the forum, which I think we have, right, Patrick? Do, do we? I oh, Do we have the the finished po never mind I also registered as a member and will purchase a year long membership during this month and thank you very much Gabriel I really appreciate that ooh I, so she says she has the fancy pronunciation it's Gabrielle ah ooh, French I pronunciation ah Gabrielle <laughs> love that I think I got it right the angel of the annunciation so on the um we got to go in order here because Patrick's he's he's giving he's making me a challenge he's doing it backwards on me I don't know what's going on here but number six Bernadette oh Bernadette Saint Bernadette um, we have a rare find this is the video rare find how to upholster 1860s antique chair restoration part number one and Bernadette says, I am so happy I found your channel, exclamation point, but used in the right way, Patrick. We talked about yes. that, right? Um, just bought a pair of antique chairs, exclamation point. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no exclamation point there. And they needed to figure out how to get the old tax out without damaging the wood. Thank you for the excellent information. So that was, we were showing how to do that on that video. So if you guys want to learn how to take out uh, tacks around really nice finished antique wood or what's worse than that sometimes a newer pieces of furniture let's say a lacquered a lacquered piece of furniture oh. that really one little thing and that's it um, we show how to do that with that video and I forgot about that actually it's one of the tips in that video so the next one is from Roberto and he says on how to upholstery a dining room chair part five wow that was one of the long ones, huh, Pat? Yeah. Final step double piping. 
So uh, Roberto says, really useful to understand how much work there is to do it properly. You betcha. Jimmy's finding that out now. Um, and we'll get to him in a, in a minute. Now, what? 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 Jimmy's asleep in that, um, you know, I'll ask the people around Jimmy, all the studio audience, to keep him awake by giving him a nudge once in a while. Nice. You can get a close-up of Jimmy when he's eating that ice cream, Patrick. Right, you guys right give right me a yeah. I've got to buy my own coffee in front of him. That's all I keep hearing. Get a nice close-up of him. <laughs> um, crate and barrel fitted panel arm. That's the name of that, that video. How, how did you begin? I can't see the sides in the beginning. Uh, did those come off first? Yes, they did. They're put on separately, the outside bags. It's kind of focused on that on that arm and I have to tell you I remember this I had a very difficult time with this chair and I actually had a professional upholsterer comment on this and he wasn't being very nice but um, that's okay I could take criticism too but I didn't take this down Patrick on purpose I show I show this because even I struggle with certain things I'm not perfect right Jimmy uh, well, you're, Far from you it. Tell me you're perfect no matter what. <laughs> Far what from you, it. When I stepped through that door, that you said, Jimmy, I'm good. <laughs> I'm beyond good. I'm great. But. But. Not perfect. That, that's where you left me, and I. Not perfect. Yeah, so, left me to my own <laughs> So I remember this well because it did give me such a hard time. This this fitted on the fabric was, if at any defense at all, the fabric had no. It was a, one of those laminated finishes, and it had no, and I had no say in the fabric. It was brought to me. I had an awful time, and I had to. What I had to do on that is just kind of bring out other, all of my bag of tricks. You know, what was that cartoon character with the bag of tricks? That cat. Remember that Felix? Was it Felix, Felix the cat? cat? No, he had his own group. Who had, who had the bag of tricks? The bag of the kit with the bag of. You remember that cartoon? I heard, yeah, but I don't remember the character. You know what I'm talking about. Yes. But anyhow, upholsterers had that, and I, I remember it. I had to, I took my glasses off at one point, and I was getting frustrated. Did we take it down? No, we didn't. And I'm proud of the fact that we kept it up there, Patrick. Yep. But just some of the comments we got, uh, you know, from a well, who cares? Oh, who cares? <laughs> I'm not going to go. I don't care. Everybody's entitled to their opinion, right, Jimmy? Oh, uh, that's what you never told me. Even Jimmy. <laughs> even, yeah, even... If everybody has critics, no matter who you are, Jimmy. Don't worry about it. You sure? All right. I feel better already. Okay. <laughs> How did you be... Okay, that I answered that. So number nine, I have a high back... This is about the upholstery show, tips and probably last week. I have a high back rest wooden dining chair, which I hate. I wonder if you could make a video how to make the back rest of a chair cut the height in half. Whoa. Did you hear that, Jimmy? Huh? I've, I've done that before. You've done what again? Cut? He says cut? he's got a high back rest wooden dining room chairs, which I hate. And he's wondering if he could cut the back rest down. It's quite a job doing that, especially if it's finished wood. It's one thing, he did, it doesn't really say if it's an upholstered back. If it's upholstered, mm -hmm. you can knock it down and do kind of a okay woodworking job on it and get away with it. Yes. If it's a finished wood, that's a totally different story. Well, I mean, is he going to cover the wood, too? Well, that's another thing. If he's going to cover the wood, he doesn't have to be super careful with the woodwork. No, but I mean, but you have to be, like, wicked acting, you know, right on with it. But if you ask any woodworker, they would say, that you ask them, what is the hardest thing for you to make from scratch? Almost all of them will say, a chair. Right. A chair, because a chair has to sit at an angle, about a 15-degree angle on the back, and the, if it's a proper chair, dining room chairs sometimes are flat. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're wedge shaped. Don't ever sit in one of those if you've got a bad back like I do right now because you won't get up. But it should be angled. And, and then there are other angles that are weird angles that, well, that need to be perfect. Like a variety of seats around. Like you say, a hard wooden chair. Yeah. Basically form fitting. Yeah. Uh, the, the chair that you're in, the dining room chair, different cushions up yeah. with that. Cushioning helps. Um, and then uh, Super Ross, about how to run an upholstery shop. I, I enjoy doing that. I hope people got a benefit from that. Uh, it's more about organization skills than anything else. I'll tell you something. You can have, and I showed in that video, you can have, you know, talk about balls in the air. You, you have somebody, a juggle with the balls in the air. If you have a, even a mid-sized upholstery shop or even a small upholstery shop, 
and you and you'd be surprised at the amount of things that are going on at once you know like you know jobs in progress not not every job goes a to z you know that's ideal but that would be a very very small shop you know with one piece at a time like that usually you're doing multiple pieces I'll, t I'll tell you right now what's going on in my shop I have a love seat that has four cushions. I have a skirt that goes with that. I have the body, of course, that I have to cut out. I have a sofa that's a three-seater with three back cushions and a skirt. I've got a 110-inch sofa that's ready to go. I have the fabric and that has about eight cushions on it. I have that Sheridan that pulled my back out that's right next to you, Jimmy. Give that a hit, will you? <laughs> oh, I like this. I was at oh, you would like it. That's the one that pulled my back out, you son of a gun. Really? So there's that Sheridan over there that's an antique sofa that the springs need to be retied. And I, I have the fabric for that. That's ready to go. I have in the window, I have a little settee. And I have other work out there that all kinds of cushions. I think I have about 100 cushions in all that need to be done. So, so that needs to be put somewhere. And... Uh, you just can't remember all that. So that's what we talked about in that. If you guys want to see that, it's called How to Run an Upholstery Shop. That was fun. So the next, uh, the last YouTube, and then we're going to have Jimmy come up. Um, and I know that all of you have been anticipating his arrival up here on the main stage here at the spacious studios of Upholstery on Broadway, Broadway Upholstery School. Did you say spacious? Spacious. And Jimmy, uh, uh, I know that you're anxiously waiting for your moment in the spotlight. You mean a few seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, this is going maybe. It's already 4.45. Oh boy, well I'm sorry, we don't have time for Jimmy today. Oh, thank, thank I'm you. just kidding. Yeah, I knew that was coming. <laughs> thank you all. Thanks for that five second cameo. I mean, there's a ham here that needs satisfying. <laughs> he needs to be well cooked. <laughs> How do you use and choose trim. This was fun. This is from Charles. This is useful. Thank you. Park, a padding and dining room chairs. This is from Laverne. Beautiful job as always. Love your videos. And then, this is a very recent video that we did today or yesterday, Patrick. Yep. Applying yesterday trim to... Likes. Doing good. I love Patrick's... Uh, a lot of success with the YouTube, I think, is the, are the thumbnails that Patrick uses. And I think I'm starting to see a trend with the with the if somebody sees a French flag <laughs> and they go to the right that's what Patrick has here. Applying trim to French chairs. And Janine says, Great tips as always. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Janine, for being a good supporter. And finally, Lois, um, how to upholster 1860 chair part five, measuring and applying fabric. Patrick, again, a good thumbnail. I love this thumbnail. He's got the picture, if you don't see it up there, he's got a picture of an old saloon that this chair, we, we traced this chair to Kansas City, so we were imagining that that was around, it was dodging bullets in its lifetime above that saloon, right Pat, yeah. right, right guys? We gotta make a movie about that. We're gonna make a movie about that. The fastest chair in the West, starring Jimmy. Oh, well, sure, sure. <laughs> throw, yeah, yeah. Throw, throw me in as the last, like, hey, we need a fill-in. We have to be careful, Jimmy, you know, he is, a, he is a bona fide star. He's done a lot more than anybody here. He was in a movie. And he is a member of SAG? Um, I'm still waiting. Still uh, waiting for the membership. Four, five, Ten years uh, later. But how many years? The movie um, was there, came out in 2010. He was in the movie The, the Town. That came out in 2010. Jimmy was. Seriously. No, no kidding. He was in the opening. Were you in the opening of The Town? The opening 30 seconds or a minute of How many people can say that they were in the opening of a major movie? If you guys want to check it out. I just want to read your question down from the forum. That was about the latest video. Okay. It's from Denise. Okay. She watched the video on applying French gym and noticed some modern pieces with fabric, flat band trim, usually with nails. Any thoughts on or tips on how to make or apply flat band trim? Oh, I'm not a big fan of the flat band trim, although I've done it before. I would rather use gimp with the nails, but I know what she's saying. She's using a piece of fabric. It depends. Okay, she, you can also get the bands, I understand that. But you have the same problem with the bands with color, with color variations. You know, when you think about it, GIMP or bands, either one. Um, let's say you've got a hundred choices, but compared to the tens of thousands of fabric choices and colors, it's not that much. So you're always going to be a few, a few off. Now what I've done in the past, I've used fabric depending, let's say it's a full leather. You can use a full leather for a band if you cut it really well trim it to that half inch. 
but the trick on those, after you cut it, Jimmy, on a full leather, mm -hmm. you can see the white part of the back of the, of the trim after you cut it. Oh. So what you do to overcome that is just take a, a marker. If it's black, you just take a black magic marker. If it's brown, you take a brown magic marker and you, and you go out there. I hope this helps. I think this is a good tip. I've forgotten this. I haven't done this in 30 years. But you can use the fabric, if, but you, you take the white and blot it out with the, with the magic marker of the color. That, even if it's green, you can take a green marker. Okay. Isn't that a good tip? It is. The tip we, of the day. So the last one, Jimmy, is how to upholster. The, the question is yes. Oh, this is funny. Now, Lois says, yes, that cut just did for the back definitely is scary for me. Thank you for the teaching. And I think cuts are probably the most scary thing with their fabric probably for people. It, it's the scariest thing is the cutting of the, is the cutting around posts because you can put all the work in the pattern right Jimmy mm -hmm. and get get it all ready get it all pin tack the fabric and then make a miscut and you don't have any extra fabric that's that that can ruin your day right Ooh, so yeah. Jim, Jimmy why don't you come on up here oh, you know? okay let me see if we're gonna get half mile correct Jimmy is coming up here please make room from back there all you people in the studio audience oh, back yeah, there make yeah. sure you Oh, here you go, Jimmy. You yeah, I'm, here. I'm here. It didn't yeah. take us long. Oh, Sorry. boy, I'm going to get up here, but that back. Oh, oh, well, I'll, have to, I'll have to call ahead. Maybe the ambulance will pay for that ride. Oh, no, right? no, they, cost, they charge $500. Very oh, they charge more than that. So, that one asks us really quick. Uh, Lucas has a question. Lucas has a question. He says, so off topic question, is Kevin going to offer individual Zoom sessions at some point? I have a mid-century project coming yeah. up soon, and I'll get some advice on the project. It would be amazing. Well, we, we did. did we, we, so we meant to put those back out. If we, if we do do the Zoom, they will be the individual ones, not the six right. people class. So. But we did one with Janine, right? With uh, Erica. Erica. Yeah. And it went very well. It went very well. Erica is, is good, though. Erica is like, she, she understands the lingo game. and everything. But I find the Zoom classes, uh, I find them difficult to do with this. I, it's not like you're just sitting there teaching mm -hmm. and giving information out or having a meeting. I mean, mm -hmm. I think that's mainly it, right, Patrick? But if Lucas is willing to uh, not expect a perfect product. If Lucas could, says you know. we could try it again to see how it goes with Lucas. Well, for don't sure. you have to have a piece of equipment so they can see what you're well, doing? Well, this is too. part of the problem. I think I think we're a little bit, I think when the three-dimensional, I was looking, hey, Patrick, by the way, somebody was talking about this on one of the stations. Somebody developed a 3D Zoom, zoom uh, class. It's like a game. Oh. But, but I think that that, I think we're a little bit, I think when that technology comes out, we can do it. Mm -hmm. I, think if, I think we could do it for Luke because he's going to talk to us privately. Yeah, sure. Up, yeah. Sure. But I want to catch up. Send us an email, Luke, so we can uh, yeah. talk about it. So I want to catch up on Jimmy. Jimmy, uh, what do you think about how you how you doing? Well, it's um, a slow process. And um, talking to you today, I guess we're going to put in another layer of... Well, let's, let's tilt this up for people can see. Okay. okay, so let's catch people up. Last week... Jimmy did an eight-way tie, really good job. And today, Jimmy put the burlap on, and there's techniques for the burlap. And, mm -hmm. and what we do with Jimmy, actually, I did what I did with Jimmy today on the burlap, folks. Burlap is a good place to to uh, practice your cuts. Speaking of back cuts like this, so what I did with Jimmy, and, and uh, it was funny. I came over when he was at the burlap stage. This is what I said to him. I said, "Okay, Jimmy, listen. I'm going to give you a few steps. I want to see how you do." And don't try not to ask questions, you know. Mm. I, I want to see how, because he's at that point now where he does have a good understanding. He's been doing this for a while. So I, I tested Jimmy today. So I said, okay, I want you to cut your burlap four inches longer with, with the soft tape. Go over the springs. Mm -hmm. Cut the burlap four inches longer overall. Right. So this is how clear I was. I made sure I was, I was as clear as possible with Jimmy. And then front to back, always your furthest point. Mm -hmm. Go over with the soft tape measure over the springs. Add four inches to that overall. Right. Okay, then what I want you to do is I want you to take the burlap over here. I want you to go to the back first. I want you to fold it, and I want you to staple it every two inches. And I don't want you to go too close to that post. I want you to stay two inches off that post. Okay, then what I want you to do is I want to stretch the, to the front with the burlap. Do not fold on the front. Stretch it, because mm -hmm. that's your stretch side. Stretch and staple about every two inches opposite what you did on the back. Right. Then, Jimmy, what I want you to do, I want you to cut this on a wide cut, okay, and I want you to finish stapling, folding over here, folding not too far over here, right, just to here. Mm -hmm. And then I want you, from that post that you finished, stretch the rest of it because you stopped stretching right there. I want you to do the same on the other side. And then, Jimmy, what I want you to do, 
I want you to pull the, the, the ends and staple those just about two inches in the middle. Guess what, you guys? How many instructions did I give you on that? Well, I think five or six. No, it's more than that. How many, Patrick? I, we, I lost count. I would say about <laughs> ten. If people want to replay this, they're I would have already been lost if I was trying they're to. They're going to replay it, right? Okay. Sure they but guess what happened? Jimmy didn't ask one question that came over at about, what, 10, 15 minutes later, and he had everything that I had done, and I was really impressed. Thank you. I really thought that he was going to ask me. Okay, then I didn't give him everything, though, well, right? Of course not, ladies and gentlemen. This is where the <laughs> suspense starts. <laughs> then the final thing Jimmy had to do was cut this post. And he, the reason that this is important to keep... To do, try it on your own, you guys. Practice on your own because you're 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 your own best teacher too. Sometimes. Right? Yes. So you're you're gonna learn that better by doing it without me just hovering over you. Right. Okay. And it's gonna make you better at the fabric cuts. So there's a method to my madness, right? Mm -hmm. So the last thing Jimmy had to do, one angle cut to this post, one angle cut to that post, and he finished his his burlap. Mm. And then what we did, why don't you explain what you did on the front? I'll let Jimmy explain. Well, we put the trimming on here. So what do they call that trimming? Oh, the old-fashioned name. What is the old-fashioned name? Fox edging. Fox edging. Well, we're going to use fox edging then, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. We're going to go back in upholstery history today. <laughs> so what I did was I initially uh, stapled the flange on the inside mm -hmm. every two inches. Mm -hmm. Once I had that done and the, you could see that there was this piece a board here, part it's of the wood, part of the frame that had been quite the uh, overlapping. Mm -hmm. So Kevin uh, cut it out, and we put a small piece in there. To One of the problems, a pro little problem solving there, because the frame came up. Yeah. And, and originally, I thought Jimmy could just kind of coast over that with that, but that didn't work. Oh, well. So we had to cut this, and then we'll go ahead and keep explaining. Well, as we went along, of course, again stapling the flange on the inside. Kevin telling me that, oh, okay, we have to make this a little bit stronger. So we got the 14 ounce tack, again, every other, every two inches, again, mm -hmm. all the way to the length inside, a little stronger. Yep. And then one more time. One more. And that one was the more key. time with the staple gun on the in, uh, on the outside, just on the bottom, as you can see my finger, basically like pressuring down, yep. so it really would hold. You know, and it is pretty strong right now. So now you've got you've got something that's not going to roll, and and the important thing is it's like mirroring the the, the wood the, the framework right here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that I gave Jimmy some some news today about his next step on this, which is going to be another one, another fox edging uh, on top. This is going to be a little hand. This is all going to be hand stitched. Of course it is. So we do need to raise this up a little bit. Um, in order for it to be properly so, angled. You know. So this is going to be blind stitching? You're going to have a series <coughs> of three blanket stitches on that. Oh, really? Okay. So if you guys want to learn how to blanket stitch, <coughs> this is going to be online and Patrick, I don't know when. But if you have a yearly subscription like Janine was talking about, you can't wait for Jimmy's next project, which is this one. Yes. So you guys should check that out. And we have... Um, this. There's a lot on there now, Patrick, right? A lot of content. There is. And like Janine says classes. it's the best value. Multiple classes. And yeah, a small little teaser. We're going to be completely revamping the site for the new year, so. Oh, good. Stay okay. tuned for that. It's going to be. Well, how often is it that you ha that I have something like where you have to double it up? Where it may I've, I've never had that before. I've only yeah. I've done two or three pieces. And it's I'm not sure. To have you done a, a piece from scratch? This is your first piece from scratch. I mean, where yeah, everything needed to be added. But with the edging, I mean, being as high as it is, that I mean. Why don't you grab the cushion, Jimmy? I, I would grab it, put my back. Grab That's it. All right. put, put the cushion up top there. Okay. Let's, let's show people what I mean by this. Okay. So if we don't, Again, if we right don't, way. if we don't raise this a little bit more, you see how this is tilted this way? Yeah. So our goal is to raise it up angled it at least about a 6 to 10 degree angle back. Mm -hmm. Now being a little settee, we don't have to be, it's not like a, a huge sitting sofa where it really is important to get that. This is more of a perching piece. You know that. Yes. It's a perching piece. So we don't have to be, now this is interesting you guys, the angles on the seat on the, so you have a the deck and the seat. The seat should be uh, higher than the deck in order to angle the cushion. Okay. So when you have a little settee that's a perching, you're perching on it. You don't have to be at the at, at the, that angle on the seat. Doesn't have to be, or that loft doesn't have to be as lofty as as a a, a 
a fully upholstered sofa with back cushions, for instance, and you really want it to slant back. Okay. This is not as much. However, that you said, you still want a little bit of an angle, though. Yeah, that said, you know, you see how you're a little, you're high this yes. way, and if we had the straight edge, we could show you. Yeah. Wow, so how much of See that? Hey, what? guess what? It folks now. Live TV, right? Mm -hmm. Drum roll, right, Jerry? We're gonna I already know we have to add this. My yeah, eye tells like me we have to add this, right? Watch this. What does that look like that distance there? What does that look like? Oh, a good does inch that, and a half. Does that look like uh, the, the thickness of this wall? Yes, ball? how did yeah. you know? Jimmy, I don't know. It's 40 years, over 40 years of Oh, time to call it a day then. Yeah. <laughs> Are you saying you want to take off? Uh, uh, no, thanks. I got, I got to have another day job. Thanks. <laughs> well, okay, but really, I mean, that is, that is uh, I want to see how we do this with the stitching and how we re reinforce the whole thing to make it level and to I, even... I'm going to warn you, next week, yeah. next time, there's going to be a lot of stitching. If you get that on there, all three blanket stitching on that I would be impressed and that would be a good class okay. to show that so okay I think unless there's any other questions Patrick and no, is there any other questions so this was fun Jimmy thank you for for joining okay. us no uh, don't worry about it the uh, the uh, extra rice coffee next week I think you know, yeah the, uh, we're, we got to make sure Patrick for the diva next week we got, we got to get the iced coffee the platform shoes <laughs> and the trail yeah yeah may, may, may make sure they get put some real put some Real tires on them this time, not wooden ones. Thank you guys. And, and round this time, not square. <laughs> Thank you, Jimmy. No problem. Thanks for being a good sport. We'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys. Take care.